it seemed like only yesterday we were dreaming about $2,100 gold. Can you believe where we are now? Silver, $27.50 per ounce. It almost seems too good to be true. Will it continue? Can it continue? Can we stabilize here? Can we move higher from here? Will we have a pullback? Those are questions you're likely asking yourself. And we've got a big, big show today. We're going to cover it all. Talk about what's happened. Talk about things like a very interesting development with our Federal Reserve and gold itself. Talk about a leading analyst who now is agreeing with us, basement dwellers. And by the way, basement dweller, thank you for being here for this, the biggest live stream in the history of the gold and silver community. Look, We've talked about $2,600 gold many, many times, but now the top analysts are talking about it as a realistic target for this year. We talked about it for May. Hey, over my left shoulder is a Christmas tree that has $2,100 gold written on top of it. We were dreaming just back in December about $2,100 gold. And when the price briefly hit that level, we thought we were having the Christmas miracle. Guys, we are at, what, 2329 was our gold close on Friday. I wrote this little poem for you. What the heck? Let's have some fun, right, basement dwellers? We deserve it. <laughs> okay. Here's my poem. <clears throat> it's been an epic run for silver and gold. On Ron's basement, you've been told. This has been a rapid ascent not a spike from a one-time event. And I wrote that seriously, not a spike from a one-time event. I know if you look, I'm, and we're going to talk about the, the, the mining stocks here in a second, but gosh, what, the last five, six weeks, the gold price has just gone up and up. It took a while for silver to catch up, up and up. Maybe silver, what do you think was a spike? But the big, big key, one of the big things that you need to realize, the one of the big answers, one of the big clues that we need to keep in mind is this really was not a one-time event-driven uh, change in price for gold or silver, right? It wasn't like there was some big news event. Do you remember anything major really happening over the last five or six weeks? Do we remember any big new, there was no banking crisis like there was a year ago. There was no new major developments in terms of wars, right? I mean, unfortunately, we do still have major geopolitical turmoil in the Middle East, in Europe, but no big news headline events that would have made everybody run to gold. No, guys, and that's a that's a big deal because this price increase that we had was more based on fundamentals fundamentals. And what's the biggest fundamental? Come on, basement dwellers. What's the, this is kind of a new concept that we've been talking about. You know, we can talk all day long, right? About the Fed raising rates, the Fed lowering rates, inflation, the employment rate. Oh yeah, we got employment numbers on Friday. We're not even going to waste your time talking about that make-believe Bidenomic uh, number that we got. Okay. No, there's one fundamental key factor that's driving and will continue to drive the price of silver and gold. You know what that is? That's the loss in real, not nominal, real value in the U.S. dollar. All that other stuff is just noise, right? Like fireworks shooting off. Oh, look at this. Oh, the Fed's got a... No. All that matters, if you invest, if you've decided that you want to put some of your money into physical silver, some of your money into physical gold. All that matters is the underlying fundamental. It's the big current. It's the big driver. It's the tide. It's the it's the gravity. It's whatever you want to call it. It's the force of mother nature. And that is that the U.S. dollar, for a host of reasons, we can talk about the national debt. We can talk about the political turmoil. We can talk about geopolitics. The, the, the underlying driver is the loss in value in the dollar. And you will see higher prices measured in unicorn fart dust. <laughs> Good old unicorn fart dust. Paper, fiat, whatever you want to call it, make-believe printed dollars. You're going to see higher and higher prices for silver and gold. So on Friday, 
<coughs> excuse me. Let's get to the statistics. Hold on just a second. I'm having a little bit of technical problem. I need to get a sip of coffee. Switched out the old coffee mug after seven days. That kind of drives Susie a little crazy. Um, nonetheless, uh, okay, Friday's closing gold, $23.29. <clears throat> Silver, only $27.44. Are you invested in the precious metal mining stocks? I am, okay? I own physical silver, which I keep off site, and I own a bunch of precious metal gold mining stocks, gold and silver mining stocks. They have been on an absolute tear, guys. The GDXJ basically in one month, and the GDXJ, this for you, those of you who don't know, GDXJ, you can Google it. It's an ETF that tracks the junior gold mining sector. It's kind of a bellwether, in my opinion, for both gold and silver mining overall. There's also the GDX, which is the big gold mining companies, but there really aren't that many big gold and silver mining companies out there. And there's like the SLV, I think, or the SILV. I don't know, there's a silver mining ETF, but to me, I watch the GDXJ. Anyway, the GDXJ basically in one month went from $30 to $40. That's an increase of only 33% in one month. A couple of the companies that sponsor Ron's Basement, I am not giving financial advice. Do your own due diligence. I'm just telling you the base facts, right? First mining gold on February 28th, uh, their stock went from seven cents per share and closed on Friday at close to 13 cents per share, about a 75% gain in one month. Okay. Fortuna Silver Mines, right here. Also, had a great, and I own both these stocks. I only work with companies that I own personally. Again, I'm not giving financial advice. Mining stocks are risky. They can go up quickly. They can come down, uh, but I think they're great values. We'll save that for another day, but let's just talk about Fortuna. February 28th was $2.60 per share. On Friday, it closed around $4.70 per share an almost 80% gain in a little over one month. So the mining stocks are moving. Let's go to a slide here because it's very interesting. And this bodes well for the actual metals prices. Guys, look at this. Still, gold prices. Um, uh, gold price versus the mining stocks, okay? This is 100. Uh, January, it says on here, there it is right there. 100 at the upper left corner is January of 2000. So they start out at the same measured level, okay? Look at the gold mining stocks. They outperform the gold price. The gold mining stocks is the blue line. The uh, price of gold is the yellow line. But then, uh, boy, what, around 2012, gold outperforms. And look at this gap that we have now between the gold miners, the blue line here in 2024 and the price of gold. It says, while gold prices have reached new record highs in 2024, gold producer stocks are still far from their 2011 peak peaks. If we look at this in numbers, I'd probably say that the gold miners are at about 300 now and the gold price is about 800. The gold miners are like literally... Um, uh, three ace the, the, have, have, have only kept up with the price of gold to a factor of less than, than half, three, three ace. Uh, oh, there's our old friend. We'll get back to that one later. <laughs> this is the HUI, the Huey. Now, look, if you're in the gold and silver sector, we need to know these things. The HUI index measures the 16 largest gold mining companies that aren't hedged, meaning they don't, they don't like buy contracts to sell their future production. Uh, it's an index that's been around for years and years and years. Some people call it the gold bugs index. You'll see that up at the upper left corner. But this is a ratio of the Huey index to gold. And as you can see, uh, in 2024, it's popped up a little bit here in the last few weeks, but it also is at an all-time high. The Huey index is basically at 0.1. Uh, 
uh, to the price of gold. And traditionally, you know, you go back, uh, gosh, you know, back to 2007, it was at 0.5. That's five times higher. Okay. So these gold mining stocks have not kept up. They are, they are severely undervalued. Sorry. <laughs> Relative uh, to the price of gold and silver. There could be a lot more room to run in the gold mining stocks. But what's critical here is to remember whether we're talking about the gold mine, what do you think it means, basement dwellers, when, when we're talking about the gold miners or the silver miners, what this data shows us is there is very little money in the sector, okay? But that's about to change, all right? That, there's very little money, but think about it. If you hold physical gold, if you hold physical silver or platinum for that matter as well. I know we have our friend Neil on here tonight. Look, what it means is there's been almost nothing invested into future production, the future pipeline for the gold mining companies, especially for the silver mining companies. I had a long conversation with Keith Newmeyer, published the video just a few. I mean, I'm telling you, when you talk with Keith, all these guys like like the the, the silver industry Mining has been depressed. But what that means is that when this wave of demand comes through, and baby, it's coming, when that wave of demand comes through, there's going to be no supply. Okay. The amount of silver coming out of the mining companies is already going down. Mexico, what does it mean when Mexico is out, talking about outlawing open pit mining? Right. Nobody's investing. Mexico is the number one producer of silver in the world. And no, but I think their production is down like what, 20, 30% in the last few years. Somebody can correct me or put the accurate number in the, uh, in the, in the chat. Thank you, by the way, to you for being here. It's a big deal. You're here. Please give this a thumbs up. It'll get the word out to more people. You know, you can subscribe if you want to, I guess I'll stop begging, making, I was making believe I had a big special. It's free to subscribe. It was a new Year's special, but that didn't work so well. Uh, but know that you're important. Know that it's a big deal you're here. We love to talk about silver, gold, platinum, mining stocks, all that stuff. You're in the right place. You're a basement dweller when you're here. Now, let's move on to some more. Some more. This was shocking. Tell me if this shocks you. Tell me if this one shocks you. Yahoo Finance headline. <laughs> this made me laugh. The U.S. economy has Wall Street borderline speechless. The March jobs report was the latest piece of economic data to surprise Wall Street analysts and send stocks rallying. I'm like, okay, then I wrote after that, I wrote, uh, uh, yeah, what, what does it tell you that they're speechless? Think about it. So Wall Street's speechless. They're in awe of Bidenomics. It's so great. We're going to talk about the 99 cent stores closing, right? Because the economy is so great. We'll talk about that later. What does it tell us when everybody's speechless? <laughs> they can't believe it. Maybe because it's not true. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. You know what I mean? Like, does that make sense? That makes sense to me. Like, yeah, I'm speechless too. We created all these jobs. Uh, Don, uh, Don the Brain, who made the Ron's Basement website, we're going to talk about that in a little, uh, a, a, a little big giveaway that one of the, one of the basement dwellers is doing on the Ron's Basement website. But nonetheless, Don's like, there's like 200,000 uh, illegal immigrants coming into our country illegally every month. Maybe that's where the jobs are going. I don't know. I still say, and I won't say this again for a month. I promise you, my fellow basement dwellers, I promise you. But I still say, number one, we know the jobs. Why can't they just tell us what the real jobs are? How many real jobs were created that had at least 36 hours per week and had full benefits, including health insurance, if you want to call it that anymore in this country, because the health system's so screwed up, but I won't get into that either. Why can't they just tell us that? Instead of, oh, well, we created 300,000 jobs, but that, you know, we accounted for the changes in the weather and we accounted for people that, uh, I don't know, you know, had toe fungus and, uh, in, in Omaha and, uh, and, and, and the RV. I mean, they, they do all these, what do they call them? Manipulations, what I call it, uh, adjustments. Why can't they just give us the real number? How many real jobs by U.S. citizens, well, I had that one in there, were created they paid 36 hours per week, let's say over 
20 bucks an hour. I mean, that's unfortunately not that much anymore in this country and ha had health insurance. Oh my God, that wouldn't that be a lot easier for them to calculate? And then of course, and then I'll shut up about the jobs numbers and they're speechless. Yeah, I bet they're speechless. Yeah. You know, right? Right. And then every month, and I didn't even check this month, but for the last 13 months, like every month when they would say the jobs number, then they would adjust the previous months. Like, oh, we were, remember last month we told you we created uh, 400,000 jobs? Well, we were wrong. We only really, we, we created like 85,000 less. But don't look at that. Look at the current month. It's great. Everything's wonderful. I'm speechless. Thank you, Metal Seer. <laughs> the Dollar Tree, changing its name to the Dollar Three. <laughs> Well, the dollar store by my house, now everything's a dollar twenty-five. And like a third of the stuff in the store is five dollars. You know, I'm thinking, oh, this is great. You get this for a buck twenty-five. Like, no, that's five dollars. It's we we changed our pricing model. I'll tell you what else I'm not happy with. Uh, let me I, th this is off subject, but hey, you know what? We're having some fun. I'm gonna tell you guys, I love Aldi. I always have. And this stuff, this is the one product. Never buy this from Aldi. There's a reason why it's still full. Susie bought this for a vacation we went on. And I'm telling you, the guy at the factory that made this must have been angry. It's You put a piece of this in your mouth and it tastes like fire. The other day, Susie actually said the F word. Because I was, and, and I had that part, you know, when you get something that's too hot that you know you shouldn't eat, but you're hungry. And I was sitting, it was like one o'clock and I was, I was eating, I eat a piece. I'm like, I can't eat any more of that. But then I'd eat another piece. I'm like, I can't eat any more of that. Finally, like I had flames coming out my nostrils. I'm like, I really can't eat any more of that. And Susie was out on the screen porch and I opened the door. I said, this stuff is hot. And she used the F word. She said, it's effing hot. And I was taken aback. And then I looked at her and that's part of the reason why I have such a beautiful wife. And I said, you know what, Susie? You're hotter. <laughs> but I'm bringing this back to Aldi. I don't know why I told you guys that. Hey, a little glimpse into basement life. Uh, oh, let's talk about, let's go out here real quickly. I'm going to tell you about a giveaway. Um, hold on here. Here we go. Here we go. All right, basement dwellers. Uh, I've not done a good job of talking about this, but there's a Ron's Basement. Ron'sBasement.com uh, website. Don the Brain, right? Our friend put this all together. Super nice of him. And it's a bulletin board. What I wanted was a place where you could go anytime to connect with other basement dwellers. Okay. So it's Ron'sBasement.com. And uh, you do have to register, but it's look, I'm never going to email you. I'm never going to sell your information. None of that is going on. It's, but you know, it's a bulletin board, so you have to register. But we've got a giveaway. Uh, our good friend. And so if you go to this, the first subject line here, Worldwide Gold and Silver News, click on that. And then um, ba -ba, Silver Giveaway right here, second one down. You can check it out. Our good friend Big G is how we're going to refer to him from CT. Big G from Connecticut is doing this two ounces. Let me see if I have this right. You need to read the rules here yourself. But basically, uh, you need to guess the silver price on on uh, July 3rd of 2024. And in U.S. dollars, you can start guessing on tax day, uh, April 15th. And the last day that you can guess is on May 31st. If there's a tie, uh, the person who guessed the earliest wins. So you may not want to wait to the last minute. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. You can read through here. Um, he's doing this out of the kindness of his heart. And, you know, who knows if the ronsbasement.com uh, uh, forum takes off. It could be a good, I, I wanted a place like right now, we're all together. Hello, Annie Oakley. And I see who else here? I think Big Tim, the Silvershire's here. Oh, I need to talk about Big Tim. Uh, Jake from Jake's Custom Parts. All the moderators, all the people that are here that that ronsbasement.com could be a place where people could go anytime and chat on the Bolton board forum with each other. Uh, let's talk about Big Tim. Big news. Big news from Big Tim. Silvershire, who's a moderator here on the channel about silver and gold. I texted him to say, hey, I'm going to go live. And he said, oh, okay, I was at a coin show today. I said, well, what was the coin show like? Let me read you what he said. 
So I'm, I'm thinking, like, are you wondering, like, with this, can you believe silver's $27.44 per ounce? It's unbelievable. Okay. And so I'm thinking, like, are sales picking up? I'll have to talk to Mike and Brian from Pimbex. Uh, are sales picking up? I don't know, right? But Big Tim said this. He went to he went to this uh, coin show. He said it was a massive crowd early here at the Evansville Casino. That's where they had the coin show. Uh, I think it'd be a wiser use of your money to buy silver than to play blackjack or craps. Trust me, I've done a lot of both of them. And uh, buying silver coins is a lot better, uh, generally speaking, than buying those casino chips. Nonetheless, there were... There were four people waiting at each table. Unsure how many dealer tables we had, but it's a large conference room. The crowd did die down drastically at noon, likely due to the beautiful weather. Yes, we've been having beautiful weather here in the Midwest. I know our friends on the East Coast have been having some, I think people up in New Hampshire are having snowstorms last I heard. Um, he said that random year, American Silver Eagles at the show. Wow, thank you. Wow, thank you. Jim, James, CWLPO, thank you. Man, you are so generous with me. Random year American Silver Eagles were selling at $32. Um, that's still $450 over spot, but still cheap, um, as I expect premiums to start roaring, soaring soon. Uh, yeah, and I do too. I'm telling you, premiums. I mean, the real sweet spot to buy silver was, what, about six, seven weeks ago when it was, what, 22, 23 per ounce and premiums were super low. I mean, really, really low, uh, but still a good time. I think historically the premiums are still very reasonable. We don't know, right? We don't know where the price is going to go, but it's going to be interesting. Let's head out. I'll tell you one of the smartest analysts out there, and he has. A, we're just going to cover a couple of the key points that he made here, but Dave Erfley from the Junior Mining Junkie. Okay, this this guy's been around for decades, following the uh, gold and silver sector, and um, and really a super nice guy. He's a friend of the basement. He's well, he's been on on the basement one time. Hold on here. What am I doing wrong? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Hopefully you can all still see me and hear me. Uh, okay. He's been on the basement. He's a super good guy. Uh, let me read this. Despite, there's some cool information in here. Despite, Suzanne says, Snakebite, thank you for the super chat. Susie, thank you for the text. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to do like eight things at once. I don't even know if you guys can still see me and hear me right now, but I'm just going to keep talking. What the heck? Uh, he says, despite a multi-month high in the U.S. dollar, remember that, okay? And rising treasury yields, remember that. Gold futures posted an all-time high at 2238 at the end of Q1. We know we're now almost a full $100 higher than that. But nonetheless, that was it on March 31st. This significant event has shifted risk to the upside in the precious metals complex. Guys, gold and silver have been doing well in a rising... Everything is out the window. Everything is out the window. This old, oh, the dollar has to go down for gold and silver to go up. The Fed has to lower rates for gold and silver to show... Don't believe it. Don't believe it, please. Because it's not true anymore. I started preaching this back in mid-December, right after Jeremy Powell shocked the markets by starting to talk about becoming more done. I said, think that's it. That's it. It changed the, um, I don't think he gives himself enough credit. Uh, the silver hermit, who's been a regular guest on the channel. He said, Katie bar the door. When we start to see higher inflation numbers and, and at the same time, higher silver and gold prices, that's what I see going on. I don't think silver hermit gives himself enough credit. Because uh, he said it on our show, and we've been talking about it. We are in a new paradigm. We are in a new environment. Remember what we talked about earlier? All that matters now is the fact that the dollar is going down in real value. Everything else is nominal, unicorn fart dust, fireworks, distractions, uh, noise is a good way to put it as well. That's the reality. Now, is it going to be straight up? No. Are we going to have pullbacks? Yes. 
but the big trend is going up, up, up. Yes, yeah, Susie, I believe I, I said that uh, my, my friend Jim, who gave the $50 super chat. Hey, Pat Holland's here. Hello, Pat Holland. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Pat, we need to have Pat back in the basement here soon, huh? What, do you guys want me to try to get Pat on this live stream? <coughs> See if we can get Pat in here at the very end of the live stream. Oh, you know what? I can't do that because I don't know how to invite somebody once I'm on here. But Pat, we're going to have Pat Holland on here soon. All right, let's move down. <clears throat> One more little bit I want to talk about in this Dave Earthly. Um, we're going to go down. We're going to skip all that. See, I put the work in here. Here's what we want to talk about right here, guys. Right here. This is... This is what th this is great. These are the, these are the reasons. This is what you need to pay attention to. Geopolitical tensions have played a major role in accelerating the demand for gold as a safe haven asset. When he's talking about gold, as far as I'm concerned, he's talking about silver and platinum as well. As conflicts in Ukraine and Palestine continue, the potential escalation to other countries hangs over the markets. <sighs> Okay, Daniel Diaz, thank you. Good to, good to see you, our friend Daniel Diaz, who we can't wait to see in a tuxedo and a top hat, right? The guy, Daniel Diaz. Uh, I'm going to go off and I'm going to come back to this article, guys. Daniel Diaz, Citizens for Sound Money, doing great work to further the legal tender legislation, working for you, basement dweller. Yes, you. I'm talking to you, right? All of us together here. Right? There's like 20 plus states that either have or are in, are in process of passing legal tender legislation, just like our founding fathers put in the Constitution. And of course, Pat Holland, who's been a longtime friend of Ron's Basement with the Missouri Freedom Initiative, is doing tireless work here in Missouri as well. Both these guys deserve a big round of applause from all the basement dwellers. Please, in the comment section, say thank you, Dan. Thank you, Pat. Because guys, if you love silver and gold, you would you better love laws being passed in your state to protect you and protect your right to use silver and gold uh, as legal tender, right? And that's okay that we want that because our founding fathers put it in the Constitution. Okay, back to this. Our friend Dave Erfley, the potential escalation to other countries hangs over the markets like the sword of Damocles. I have no idea what that means during a heated presidential election year, right? Nobody's talking about that. And we've not even seen what's going to happen with that yet, okay, in the U.S. Meanwhile, the four-year-long wait for the inevitable interest rate cuts in the U.S., the EU, and the U.K. comes closer to fruition as inflation remains sticky. Well, we got sticky inflation, but they're going to have to cut rates. Again, noise, noise, noise. With cracks beginning to appear in both the artificial intelligence sector and Bitcoin parabolas, the fundamental backdrop remains ultra bullish for the safe haven metal uh, gold he's referring to, but I'm going to throw silver, silver in there, due to an ever-growing number of macro and geopolitical factors that are currently unfolding. A confluence, that's the C word that we talk about in the basement, a confluence, a coming together of forces that create a greater force that propel the real value and price measured in paper, unicorn, fart dust, fiat dollars of silver and gold much higher. These include uh, persistent geopolitical, these, these are the factors that he is pointing out, persistent geopolitical tension, strong central bank purchases, uh, growing demand from China as a hedge fund, I'm sorry, as a hedge against economic instability in the world's second largest, excuse me, I have the hiccups, economy, Along with November's high stakes U.S. presidential election, we have an eclipse where the world's going to end. We've got, I mean, you know, it, it, that, I think that I love Dave Erfley from the Junior Mining Junkie, uh, and, and I love his list, his confluence there. It's impossible for anybody to pull them all together, but there's a lot of factors coming together uh, that are going to lead to much, much higher precious metals. All right. Uh, Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. That's what you get when you come to the basement. Technical difficulties. I forgot something. I forgot. Little bonus. Do you like silver? Huh? Do you like silver? And hold on. Here it is right here. 
the strong rally in silver above the stiff. It's been stiff. That's a nice way to say it. Two-year resistance at $26 on Wednesday means its role, this is key, as an inflation hedge and safe haven asset has returned after a four-year hiatus, despite the challenges posed by rising bond yields and a strengthening U.S. dollar. The dollar's getting stronger. That's okay. Silver doesn't care. Silver's getting stronger, right? Bond yields are going up. You know, right, because like we've said, we've covered this, guys. They aren't probably even going to lower interest rates. They don't need to lower interest rates. The value of the dollar in real terms, I won't say it again, I promise, is going down. Real terms. Everything else, smoke and mirrors, fun, funny money, whatever you want to call it, okay? Whatever you want to call it. So all this stuff is 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 creating an environment where the value of silver and gold are going to go higher. And what uh, Dave points out here, uh, well, here one more paragraph. After after becoming more of an industrial metal over the past several years, silver safe haven component is reaffirming its appeal amid geopolitical tensions. Last week, the gold silver ratio moved up to ninety which has been strong resistance over the past two years. So think about this, right? Because everybody gives us this, oh, well, you know, silver, silver is not a monetary metal. Silver is an industrial metal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's fine. Silver is an industrial metal. I'll give you that. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that it's also still not a monetary metal. Silver is the most undervalued. Do you know that? Do you realize that silver is the most undervalued asset on the face of this earth? Everybody says that, right? Silver still like half of its all-time high in nominal terms, okay? In real terms, in adjusted for inflation, the real 1980 all-time high in silver, I hear 140, 150, as high as 167, should be $167 per ounce. So the argument here is, is right every you get all, all these people right and and not all these people because 99% of people are clueless about silver but that's going to change right <laughs> but even those that are clued into silver you'll hear people say well it's not it's not a, it never stopped being a monetary metal it just became there's a, a ton more demand that's been created for it because it's also an industrial metal. Silver was a monetary metal before gold. Sorry, right? That's just the reality of the situation. Okay, what about the Federal Reserve? Let's talk about our friends over at the Federal Reserve. Uh, first, I want to say thank you, channel sponsor, Pinbex, spelled, get your pen and paper out, P-I-N-B-E-X, pinbex.com. You can go to their website, Pimbex.com. If you're looking to buy silver, gold, or platinum, but you know, I got to tell you, if, if you like to overpay for your metals, like if you like to get the exact same thing, I got to ring the bells. Thank you, Susie. Susie's texting me every five minutes. Uh, if you if you're the type of person who likes to overpay, like let's say it's a ten ounce Canadian Royal Canadian Mint silver bar, right? And you could buy it for uh, I don't know, don't quote me on this, but you could buy it for, for $295 on one website, or you could buy it for $340 on another website. And you're going to get the exact same bar in the mail. If you're the person who just likes to pay more, do not go to Pinbex. But if you want to get more metal, if you want to get the best prices for the exact same product, that, by the way, because I've ordered from Pinbex many times over the past, will come to you wrapped like Fort Knox, okay? Uh, yes, we're still doing the bell. Everybody keeps texting me. Hold on, I'm put it up here. It's not so distracting. <laughs> uh, uh, check out Pimbex, okay? You'll get the exact same product for a better price, and it will come to you wrapped like Fort Knox. But you need to discover that for yourself. I'm not telling you what to do. Go check out Pimbex. You will get more metal for your money. Where was I? Oh, I got to ring the bell. All right, guys. Hey, we got 100 thumbs up, okay? Um, so what we're doing, because it's fun, is we're ringing the pocket pinger. And today, you know what? Since we got the Big Tim, the Silvershire, look at this beauty. You're going to hear her sing. 
oh boy, I just love showing you one piece of silver. Nothing like silver. Absolutely beautiful. This came from Big Tim the Silver Shire. And, oh, I got 200. Okay, I'll do the cowbell too. We're going to do a double bell. For those of you who don't like bells, leave. <laughs> I hope you don't. You big dummy. Oh, Susie just said I'm a big dummy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten for 100 thumbs up. And where'd the cowbell go? Here's the cowbell. 200 thumbs up. All right, guys. Is the Fed up to something with gold? The Federal Reserve. Hmm. There's some interesting developments with the Fed. Because, because word on the street is that foreign governments, right? The Fed, apparently the New York Fed, stores a lot of gold for foreign governments. And we all heard that story that Germany tried to get their gold back and it took like 10 years or five years or whatever. But the word on the street is that a lot of foreign governments are wanting to repatriate. That means take back their gold. This is going on all around the world. And it's not just gold, it's silver as well. I mean, what is this telling us? Right. We know central banks are buying massive amounts of gold. We know countries are taking back their gold, right? And probably silver are they hoarding. Right? And we know the Chinese, I'm hearing they're hoarding everything right now. All these, like they're wanting to get rid of their dollars and acquire more and more of the metals. But what does it tell us that there's some monkey business apparently going on with the Fed and the New York Fed when it comes to foreign government? Like these foreign governments had trusted our Fed to hold on to their gold. And we're going to dig into that because it's very, very interesting. First, I want to have a quick cup of uh, drink of coffee. We're going to talk about the Fed. But speaking of coffee, I need to say thank you to one very special basement uh, dweller, right? Cellar dweller, basement dweller. All right. Look at this. This is Santino Supremo coffee from our friend Vinny. He sent this to me. This is my uh, second and third bag. The other bag's upstairs, uh, which we've almost finished. This has got to be, I'm telling you, the best coffee in the world. He's a basement dweller, right? Owns a coffee company, loves gold and silver. So thank you, um, Santino Supremo Coffee. I, I didn't get a chance to get his permission to pull up his website during the live stream, but uh, Santino Supremo Coffee. And look, I'm going to tell you something right now. See that little hole right there? That little that little hole? <laughs> I'm so tempted to say something else, but I'm not going to. When you squeeze this bag, you wouldn't believe, ah, oh, the smell that comes out of this bag. It is like the best, uh, the best smell that you're ever going to hear. But what's the Fed up to? Is the Fed up to something, huh? Word on the street. I said that already. Um, the Met, the, the main Fed, well, let's just, let's just go to this article because it, it's interesting. Tells, this gives us a little glimpse into what's really going on out there. The Federal Reserve refuses to provide records of foreign gold holdings. I wonder why. Why won't they disclose the foreign gold holdings? Darn it, I'm using the wrong browser. I'm supposed to be using Brave. But anyway, uh, weeks after Federal Reserve Chairman Jeremy Powell, let's highlight this, okay, evaded a sitting congressman's question about the central bank's foreign gold holdings, they just won't say, okay, why? Why don't we know how much gold is in Fort Knox? Why won't they say how much foreign gold? This is different than Fort Knox. This is foreign countries that have stored massive amounts of gold traditionally in the United States. Okay, why? Why? Right? He's evading the question. The Fed also, all, this is also, declined to comply with a Freedom of Information Act request for records about such holdings. This gets super interesting, okay? Uh, here, the Federal Reserve's lack of transparency comes amidst reports that countries are removing their gold and other assets from the U.S. in the wake of unprecedented Western sanctions imposed on Russia over its invasion of Ukraine. 
countries are afraid that if they if we don't like something they do, that we'll just take their assets. Okay, uh, according to 2023 Invesco survey, a quote substantial percentage of central banks express concern about how the U.S. and its allies froze nearly half of Russia's 650 billion gold and 4x reserves. Uh, the Moon Man, right? Uh, from West Virginia, asked Powell about the matter in a, in a December letter, only to have the Fed chair respond last month with an evasive no answer, telling him that the Federal Reserve does not own gold, but holds it as a custodian for other entities, a fact that the congressman presumably already know. So this is where it gets interesting. Following that response, Headline USA filed a Freedom of Information uh, request with the Fed for records reflecting how much gold the Federal Reserve Bank of New York currently holds in its vault. Okay, this is different, guys, than Fort Knox. Again, this is gold that our, that our Federal Reserve is holding for foreign governments, as well as records reflecting the ownership stake that each of the Fed New York Bank's uh, central bank government clients have in that gold. The Freedom of Information Act request also sought records about the Fed's gold holdings before the Russia uh, February 20, uh, 2022 invasion of Ukraine. However, the Federal Reserve denied the Freedom of Information request on Wednesday. It says, quote, so basically I'll tell you what happened. The Fed basically said, sorry, we aren't going to tell you. And really, uh, that's the business of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, okay? But they then went on to say that the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, guess what? They're not going to tell you either. So this begs the question, why? This is crazy. Why? Why won't? Why won't? Think about this, guys. When it comes to gold in the United States, two, two big components. We have the gold that our government we're told has at Fort Knox, right? 8,000 metric tons, I believe it is, but we can't audit it. It's your gold. How do you feel about that, Basement Dweller? I'm a little mad about it myself. It's my gold. It's your gold. It's our gold, <laughs> but we're not allowed to like see it or know that it's there or have it audited. You know, I think the last thing Mnuchin, Munch Mnuchin, I don't like that guy. I like most everybody in the world. I don't say I don't like him. He creeps me out. Stephen Mnuchin, he was Treasury Secretary, I think under Trump, maybe. Anyway, ex-Goldman Sachs guy, of course. He was there with his girlfriend or something and tweeted a tweet that said, oh, all the gold's here. <laughs> okay, we call that a Twitter audit, right? No, Just think about it. There's this, this um, question. Is that a safe way for us to say it? About... How much gold is actually in Fort Knox? And all we're asking is for a real audit. Hey, I used to work for a big four accounting firm. I'll leave them unnamed. They probably prefer that. But nonetheless, <laughs> I know how to audit. I was an auditor. I audited Fortune 500 companies. Sign me up. I think we could do a very effective audit. Get my friend Slick Willie. He's a CPA, right? Uh, so there's this big question about the gold that we actually have at Fort Knox, number one. And then to make matters even more confounding, all the gold that the New York Fed owns or doesn't own is holding. Yeah, we're holding it. I guess maybe they have that uh, possession is 99% of the law mentality uh, at the New York Fed's holding. Um, uh, we aren't going to tell you about that either. I mean, come on. What is going on? Does that make you... Does that make your antenna, your spidey sense go off? That makes my spidey sense go off. Absolutely. I mean, it's crazy. Feels like there's something fishy going on here, right? Huh? And the world central banks are buying gold like never before. I don't know, guys. Can we put two and two together? We know our leaders in Washington can't. But I think we can, right? We know two plus two equals four. Why? I'll say it one more time. Why won't they tell us or let us see how much gold is in Fort Knox? Why are they so evasive when we ask how much foreign gold do we hold at the New York Fed? Up, oh, up, oh, somebody's Metal Sierra. Thank you for the super chat, my friend. Thank you, Susie, for the uh, for the text. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, we got it going everywhere here. All right, let's talk about $2,600 gold. We talked about it. You and I talked about $2,600 gold will be, okay. I got a great interview. One, the smartest guy, the smartest guy, super smart, Jordan Roy Byrne from the Daily Gold Podcast. I did it. It's a regular video interview. You got to watch it. This guy knows more about charts, gold, silver. He says we are in a situation right now like never before that as these charts play out, they will be for the textbooks. Okay. All right. We've been talking about it. You and I, $2,600 gold. I'm telling you, what do you think when we hit $2,600 gold? There's no guarantees. Don't make any financial decisions based on anything that I'm saying here. But where do you think silver will be when we hit $2,600 gold? I think when we hit $2,600 gold, we're going to have $45 silver. Okay, I'll say it. Okay. I said that I thought we'd get $2,600 gold by May. We talked about this. I said that back in December when I made my annual forecast. I didn't even go the whole year. I said, by May, I all everything, I put it all together. We're going to get 20. I think we'll get 45. But now we've got big mainstream analysts talking about just that. Let's go to this article. And a short squeeze. Short squeeze. Really. Very interesting. Here we go. Ah, oh, from our friends at CNBC, gold has broken through. And that's what Jordan Roy Byrne was talking about. Gold, gold broke out of a massive cup and handle pattern. Gold broke out of like a triple or quadruple top. And But wait, there's more. Gold also broke out of an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, we've gone through these before, but these, for those of you who don't know, these are like, the most followed, the strongest, most predictable technical chart pattern uh, developments that you could ever ask for. And it happened, okay? It's happening right now. So gold has broken through the $2,300 level and one market veteran, not anybody, but a veteran, uh, has a bullish call looking ahead, blah, blah. Uh, let's just go down here. Hold on. I got a note where to go. Okay. I'm going to skip all that because we've already talked about that. Uh, and that's just CNBC hot air. Here we go. Uh, I'll start here and read this. Jörg Keener, chief investment officer at Swiss Asia Capital, told CNBC's Street Signs Asia on Wednesday that his forward curve analysis for gold, quote unquote, looks fantastic. He said, Listen up, guys. If you look at your forward curve for a year, it's above $2,600. I think we might be really fast if we take $2,300. Well, York, we got news for you. Basement dwellers, maybe we need to send them a little, little telegram over to Switzerland. We did take out $2,300. It has a lot of pent-up demand, Jorg said. He added, okay, this is interesting. This is interesting because we aren't, we're hearing this from, um, we're hearing this from the uh, live from the vault. We're hearing this from other people, these inventory levels, because now Jorg added that an inventory collapse. Hmm. What does that make you think guys in the gold market is putting quote, a lot of derivative structures at risk. What? A lot of derivative structures at risk. Hmm. It puts probably a lot of structures which are in the market <clears throat> playing gold at risk too. Because traders, what is that? What is this? Hold on. What the heck is this thing? <laughs> How do I get rid of this? Oh my God. Can I move it? No. There we go. It disappeared. <laughs> oh man. Welcome to Ron's basement. It puts probably a lot of structures which are in the market playing gold at risk because traders <clears throat> might not be able to cover their short positions. <laughs> and if I say that 26 is for me just a forward curve, that's $2,600 gold, guys. In case we get a short squeeze, the numbers will go much, much higher. Uh, 
Susie, I think Susie said we got seven more thumbs up and then we're going to ring the gong. Okay, guys. And for those of you who don't know, and we're going to come back, this is crazy interesting. A short squeeze is when the price of an asset rises sharply and those with short positions who were betting that the price would fall are up a creek without a paddle and are forced to buy the asset to prevent more losses, typically driving up the price even further. Then he talks about... Um, he talks about all the geopolitical stuff. All right, let's go back here, guys. Here's a guy from Swiss Asia Capital talking about stress in the two things, two big things, stress in the gold market in terms of the inventory being there to be able to back up all the electronic unicorn fart dust. Maybe he's talking about the COMEX and the LBMA, just saying, okay? But... What's what's groundbreaking, ground shaking are two more things. Okay. He's talking about it creating stress in the derivatives market, potential stress in the derivatives market, because some of these derivatives that are in a derivatives, a bet on a bet on a bet, whatever, but it's it's, it's the it's the it's unicorn fart dust squared, okay, are based on the gold market. Okay. Now, and then there's even more. There's even more, but let's go. Hold on here. Hold on here. Let's just review quickly why this is so critical. Right here, right? Exter's pyramid. These are derivatives, quadrillions. Warren Buffett calls them uh, uh, financial uh, tools of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction. Remember, Gold and silver down there on the very bottom of John Exter, who worked for the New York Federal Reserve. Gold and silver are the only real assets out there. They are the base. They are the uh, they are God's money. They are nature's money. Everything above it is make believe, synthetic, including derivatives. And what he's talking about is a lot of this stuff. Still, it's all based on gold and silver, according to the Federal Reserve, ex Federal Reserve uh, uh, employee. John Exter, and when these start to fall apart, right, and all that money comes falling down looking for a new home, it's going to go to that little bitty part of the of the of the pyramid, the base, the foundation of it all, God's money, right? And it's going to be unbelievable, unbelievable. The third thing about what this guy from Swiss Asia Capital is bringing up is the idea, and that could be a short squeeze, a short squeeze. A short squeeze. Remember the silver squeeze back in February of what, 2021? February, March? I remember it. Okay. Do you remember it? Right. These squeezes happen. Remember, think about this. This is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Think about one year ago when we had a little banking crisis, we ran out of silver. You couldn't get it. It was very hard to find. You had to wait. You know, you know that whole story. How quickly this can happen now. Right? You don't need, yeah, your local coin shop will get wiped out quickly, right? I mean, and I'm hearing from local coin shops that sales have been brisk. We just heard from Big Tim, the Silvershire, that there was a crazy crowd uh, at this Evansville coins coin show, right? But remember that if there's a rush of people, we, we live in a world with instant communication, right? It does. You don't need to read it in the paper. You don't need to go to the, the 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 town square to talk to your neighbors anymore. I kind of wish we still did do that, but nonetheless, that's different. What I'm saying is you got these things, right? Right? You got these things. There it is. Yeah. Instant. You know what else? Instant communication. You know what else that provides? Right? I could in the next five minutes, I could, I could, uh, I could buy. Uh, uh, whatever, a monster box of American Silver Eagles, probably less than five minutes, two minutes, three minutes, right? We have instant, There's. we don't need, what I'm saying is instant communication and instant purchases, instant wipeout of all the inventory of available investable silver that it could happen very quickly. Look, I'm not predicting it's going to happen tomorrow or this month. I'm just saying that the reality is it can happen much more quickly. It's like bank runs. That's the big thing with happens with the banks now. Used to be when a bank run would occur, everybody go line up at the bank. Say, I want my money. I want my money. Right? Now, you want your money? You want to transfer your money out of your bank account? 
into your brokerage account, out of your bank account to buy some silver or gold. You can do it one minute on this thing. Okay. It's different. It's, it's kind of scary if you think about it. So do you have the silver that you need? Do you have the gold that you need? I don't know. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, this has been great. Thank you for being here. Okay. Um, it's always awesome to get to connect with you guys, especially on a Saturday night. We are in for some crazy times ahead. I mean, think about what's going on. Think about where we are right now with the silver price and the gold price. Does that make you feel warm and fuzzy? Huh? Uh-oh. Did we get to 300 thumbs up? Susie, could you send me a text? Hold on, guys. We're having technical difficulty. Susie, will you turn your walkie-talkie on? Everybody say hi to Susie. That's Susie's walkie-talkie. Susie, you got a copy? <laughs> this is, hello? This is how Susie and I communicate via walkie-talkie. Um, do you, are you, are you feeling warm and fuzzy? I mean, 20, I, I know it's not 30. I know it's not 45. Okay. But we have $27.44 silver. Let's all, do me a favor, basement dwellers. Let's all at one time together, smile. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Right? Hey, we'll take 2744. We know what's going on. Monkey business with the Fed. We know what these top analysts are saying. Most important, we know two key things. Okay, two key things. Mathematics shows no forgiveness on the altar of truth. And because of that, number two, we know, unfortunately, and I want to reiterate this to you, I'm a patriotic American. I love what our founding fathers set out for us in this country. I love what Thomas Jefferson, do you love what Thomas Jefferson said, right? The biggest threat to this country is not an invading army. No, it's central banks. It's big, big, big corporate interest, okay? Okay. So as a result of, of, of our country straying away from what the founding fathers laid out for us, right, there's been some, what I think, what I think, just my opinion, poor fiscal and monetary decisions and even social decisions that have been made, okay? And as a result, the underlying fact, despite all the noise, despite all the distractions, is that the real value of the dollar will continue. We need to emphasize that to depreciate. And as a result, silver and gold, in my opinion, right, right, God's money, the real asset of the world, nature's money, whatever you want to call it, whatever you believe, will shine through, will retain their value. And look, we have to look no further than the last 50 years to see proof that this is already occurring. Since Nixon took us off the gold standard in 1971, the dollar's lost 98% of its value relative to gold. I think, I could be wrong, that that level of depreciation, that rate of depreciation will only continue as we move into the coming decades. Hey, thanks again for being here. I appreciate you. And uh, I will see you probably tomorrow for a short one on Sunday. Have a great Saturday night. Thank you for the Super Chats. Thank you for everything. Please remember, give this a thumbs up.